On this episode, we finish up our political commentary with a look at the results of the election. So if you want to hear how many of my predictions came true from our previous episode, you'll love this episode of the Bangkok Podcast. Sawa Dikrap and welcome to the Bangkok Podcast. My name is Greg Jorgensen, a Canadian who came to Thailand in 2001 to introduce Thai people to the wondrous effects of coconut oil. But as you can probably imagine, I did not go to business school and my venture was not successful. <laughs> I love it. And I met Knuth, an American who came to Thailand on a one-year teaching contract more than 22 years ago. Fell in love with pretending I'm worldly and sophisticated just because I live in Thailand, even though I'm just a random guy from Ohio. So I never left. Yeah, I feel, I, I feel kind of like Jason Bourne myself walking around like, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a citizen of the world. <laughs> no, you're right. It's, well, it's not even so much that I feel that way. It's that uh, apparently some other people think that. So I'll just let them keep their illusions. Yeah. Like, so so do, you, do you ride an elephant to work? Do, <laughs> right. do you live in a temple? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm yeah, not exotic life. <laughs> yeah. Burger King and Starbucks. That's that's, right, uh, that's, that's, right. that's my that's my life. But I I don't tell them that. I don't tell them that. Sitting in an air conditioned office all day in front of a computer screen. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We want to give a big thanks to all of our patrons who support the show. Patrons get every episode a day early, behind the scenes photos of our interviews, a heads up to send questions to upcoming guests, and access to our Discord server to chat with me, Greg, and other listeners around the world. But best of all, patrons also get an unscripted, uncensored bonus episode every week where we riff on current events and Bangkok topics. On this week's bonus show, we lusted after some of the new podcasts and gear coming out and fretted over how expensive it is, mused over a very crowded soy tinea and what it says about Bangkok getting back to normal, had a debate about working from home, and discussed Greg's tragic story about why he might have to start being interested in soccer and what some of you guys call football. <laughs> to learn how to become a patron, click the support button at the top of our website. Trusty Americans to say, eh, it's too hot to play soccer in this 99 degree Fahrenheit sun. Damn straight. Right. Not catch me all the time now. I've been here too long. Now I say, footy in it, footy in it. <laughs> Those, that will never come out of my mouth. <laughs> All right, as always, if you have a comment, a show idea, or just want to say hi, head to BangkokPodcast.com and click a little microphone button on the bottom right to leave us a voicemail that we'll play on the show. And I, before we jump into it, I want to uh, read an email from a listener who had a comment um, about something that we discussed on a show recently. We were talking about how common those those key card things are in hotel rooms where you have to sure. put, put your sure. key in the little holder for the lights to come on. That's right. And uh, you, you and me said that we weren't sure if they were a Thailand thing only, or maybe we've seen them a little few places outside of Thailand, but we didn't have a lot of experience about them. We got a couple of emails from uh, from our listeners, and um, I think the bottom line here, Ed, is that you and I need to travel more because uh, <laughs> it seems that we don't know what we're talking about in this regard. And I'll read this email from our listener who sent in, which sort of uh, sums up the overall tone of the emails we got. Um, from this guy, he uh, doesn't want his name used, but he said, my wife and I travel internationally about once a month. The key slot thing for keys is definitely not a Thailand specific thing. We've had it at least one of our hotels in every country we've been to. Right. And in my past travels, I've seen it relatively often. I'd say it's in almost all hotels in Asia, even super high end places. Uh, it's maybe 80% of hotels in Australia, 50 to 70% in Europe and about 50% in the States. The random item thing works almost all the time, but I have had one or two times when it was linked to the hotel card. That was in Australia. You know, I, I, I suspected it wasn't a Thailand specific thing. It's just like you said, I just don't travel that much internationally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I'm and when I'm back home, I'm like not in hotels, right? right. Um, but oh, it's interesting. He mentioned that some of them are actually linked to the hotel card mm -hmm. because I thought I thought they all were until just a buddy mentioned to me, and he was like, "Dude, you can stick anything in there," and I'm like, "Really? Yeah, like anything will work." <laughs> I'll, so just wa I'll just wad up this 10,000 bot and stick it in the thing and forget it there. <laughs> right, See, my right, problem right. is that I have uh, an army of servants who travel ahead of me to turn, of on, turn on the lights and things like that. So, Of course, I of course. I, I might not know a thing like that. Anyway. All right. Well, in this episode, we are doing the last of an in-spirit two-part episode of the Thai election. 
Now, a few episodes back, we talked about what the political parties were offering, which got some good feedback. Uh, since the election is now over, three days ago, as of the time we're recording this, we figured it was time to do a wrap-up of the results, because boy howdy, were they ever surprising. Now, to be honest, I was a little bit lukewarm on doing yet another politics show because they don't age well, uh, and especially in Thailand, might end up meaning absolutely nothing a few months down the line, if you know what I mean. But uh, Ed reminded me that this particular election was a very important one for Thailand, and one whose ramifications may very well be felt for many years to come, no matter how things shake out. And we thought it was also a good opportunity for Ed to grade himself on his own predictions that he made on our recent show. So Ed, you talked me into this, and I I have to admit I was wrong. This is a very good thing to talk about because it is an important and important election for Thailand. Yeah, I think it's something we just kind of have to talk about. Uh, I realized that, you know, on the main show, we we try not to just talk about current events because, as you pointed out, they don't age well. Mm. So usually the bonus show is reserved for, like, kind of very current but not long-lasting things. Right. But I think this I think this election is going to have ramifications. And then, and then e- even if it gets overturned or there's another coup, it's still an education to, like— to just learn about how Thailand works. So sure, yeah. I'm not sure I'm not sure it's that important for literally if if you're just visiting Thailand for the first time it's probably not that important. But most of our listeners, you know, they are they are Thai files, they are they are intermediate to advanced uh Thailand people and so I think I think uh having an understanding of Thai politics that's a sign that that is a merit badge. Like just knowing the political parties just having some game like you don't have to be obsessive and you don't have to actually even care that much mm-hmm. about the out about the outcome but i think just knowing the political landscape that that's a merit badge what do you think i agree yeah i agree i mean it's really easy to go to a place and knowing even as a long-term expat here like we are that we can't vote um so our opinion basically doesn't mean anything so it's very easy to just sort of float on top of things like a cork and not worry about what's going on <laughs> but uh, True that. It, it, is, it is important it does show a, f- uh, a level of respect for the country in which you live or visit so i think it sure. is good to know yeah it's important sure now i gotta preface this as, as i think i did a couple weeks ago i'm not really i'm definitely not an expert in thai politics i'm a, I'm a rank amateur <laughs> um but I do know more than Greg does, so yeah, let me just say that. Yeah. So I'm a yeah. I'm a rank amateur, so I'm not sure what that makes Greg. I'm just rank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, unfortunately, due, unfortunately, due to my job, I, I kind of have to say that I'm a quote unquote expert on American politics, even though it's painful for those words come out of my mouth. But it's just kind of my <laughs> career, you know. It's just it's kind of my career, so I kind of have to say. Um, but with Thai politics, I'm an amateur, but. Uh, I've gotten more into it like recently uh, or you know I I really my first 10 years in Thailand I just I just wasn't that into it I was just kind of on the sidelines and kind of amazed yeah you know but uh, ever since the 2014 coup uh, I I got more into it and then uh, of course I've got access to a lot of great students uh, who honestly most of them are not that into politics but i have a few students who are into politics and uh i was just chatting with one right before the show to clarify a rule and so uh yeah i've got some game let's just say this so let's first let's talk about the results um uh in some ways the results were expected in other ways they were surprising Mm -hmm. so how were the results expected well it was expected that the conservative establishment parties were going to get spanked and they got spanked they got badly badly um and and, but that's what the survey showed um a quick review um i talked about certain parties kind of representing the establishment so we had kind of two military parties Mm -hmm. um and then the democrat party the oldest party uh in in thai history they're kind of the conservative establishment and then we have um pull thai and move forward that represent kind of the anti-establishment and then we have a party kind of stuck in between boom jai thai that really is actually part of the establishment but was an outlier because of their promotion of cannabis yeah they're like your they're like your hip uncle they're old that's but they're right. still kind of cool yeah, it's weird. Like they're actually part of the conservative establishment, but then have this guy uh, Kun Anutin, who's like super pro cannabis. So they're kind of in a weird category. So in a way, we can kind of set Boom Jai Tai aside. The bottom line is Pu Tai and Move Forward together crushed. 
literally crushed. And so, and, but it was expected, uh, it, but they crushed even a little bit more than it was expected. So the election as a whole was and just a repudiation of the military slash conservative complex. So that's kind of the first thing, the first takeaway. Right. Um, so ex- expected, uh, but even a little bit more so. Uh, but the second takeaway is fascinating, which is that move forward outperformed relative to put high. And this is what most people are are calling the most surprising thing about the election. And um, it definitely is surprising because most polls, especially over the last couple of months, showed put high with a fairly comfortable lead over move forward and listeners uh, hopefully you've listened to our prior shows but put high is the successor to the uh, toxin shinawat uh, political movement which started with tai rock tai and went through a couple iterations um, and of course the main candidate the first candidate for prime minister was toxin shinawat's uh, daughter right uh, petong tarn um, and so um Prior to the election, most polls showed them with like a, a fairly comfortable leave over move forward. But I'm, I'm happy to say that last week on the bonus show, when I did an update, I did talk about how move forward was advancing in the polls. And some polls had them tied or maybe even ahead of put high. Uh, so it wasn't totally unexpected, not totally unexpected. Mm-hmm. But the bottom line is move forward. They won a plurality. So they actually beat put high, which most people did not see coming. Um, right. So that that so so in that respect, this was surprising at least to most people. I think it's really interesting because put high was just sort of assumed to be the that was going to come out on top because they uh, usually represent the largest like the, the you know Isan people love put high and there's a lot of Isan people. But I think it's really easy to lose track of just how many years go between important Thai political events? Like, so Texans, you know, the first iteration of what became Pua Thai, which was Thai Rak Thai, sort of like the beginning of this movement of the Shinawa clan, it was 2000, that was 23 years ago. And you have several coups in between then. So I think, and, and this is just my observation, but I just think that movement, that enthusiasm, that love for whatever that represents I mean, it's it's that's a that's a long time to maintain that enthusiasm. I think it just sort of waned over time and got diluted, and new things came up, and new issues came in, and new personalities came in, and old personalities aged out. So I, I just think it was it's just been such a long time to have this movement going. Well, that was I mean that was the issue we discussed on the earlier show is um, have we moved on or not? Mm. The fact that we had another member of the Shinawatra clan who was winning in the polls. And it, it, so that, that was the big issue that we discussed uh, in our earlier show is, have we moved on or not? Um, and right. remember that, um, so you know, your point is well taken. This is a, 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 a quote unquote old movement, but the bottom line is they finished a very close second. So, right. so to, 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 to argue that Puerto is passe is, they finished a very close second. Um, no, but it just wasn't and, the uh, blowout that people were expecting. Well, they were not expected to blow out, move forward. They were okay. expected to win. You know, they were expected to win. You know, like I said, you know, maybe, you know, they were expected to have like a three or five percent advantage. Right. So they were expected to win. Um, but the but the bottom line is the only blowout that was predicted was was that the establishment parties would get crushed, which they did. <laughs> um, so, so the bottom line is the, most polls showed Puatai winning, but they didn't. They finished a relatively close second, which is surprising. But the question is, what does it mean? Well, I, uh, number one, it does mean that I think a bunch of Thai people have moved on, which, which means your point is well taken, that I think there, there are more, a lot of people who don't want to go back to uh, uh, the, the Shinawatra is, is, mm-hmm. is part of it. Um, but the, to, to me, the, the, the key takeaway is this is the first election uh, in really 30 years uh, because essentially the, the, the whatever version of Tai Rock Tai or Pua Tai, they've won every election for 25 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this is the first election actually won by a Bangkok-based party in 25 years. Right. Uh, and the fascinating thing is they, they, 
they dominated in Bangkok. So they were expected to win Bangkok versus Pua Thai, but they absolutely crushed. So I think out of all the districts in Bangkok, I think I think Pua Thai won like one out of thirty. Yeah. So it's like right. so move so move forward overperformed in Bangkok. But here's the fascinating thing: move forward won a lot in the north, which is the home of the Shinawatra clan, like Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, like. So move forward one a, a bunch of unexpected in a, a bunch of unexpected places. Mm-hmm. So that was the flop, you know. Where whereas whereas Pulitzer was expected to win by five or ten percent overall, and it, it ended up being moved forward one by five or ten percent. So okay. it, it, there was a, there was a, a shift. Has that there been any consensus see. on why? Uh, well, I wouldn't say consensus, but it, it, it's clear that, uh, uh, you know, like I said, it's clear that a lot of people do want to move on. I mean, remember, like we talked about before, that's the premise of Future Forward right. and Move Forward is we have to get beyond the old red-yellow shirt things. We have to get beyond the the, the, the Shinawatra dynasty. Mm-hmm. And like I said, you cannot count out the dynasty. Like, they finished a close second. So there's right. a significant uh, amount of Thai people that still support Pua Thai. Mm-hmm. Like it's, you can't count them out. Um, but the bottom line is they were expected to win and they didn't. Um, and we, and, and then the, the fascinating thing about um, move forward winning, it's not just that they're Bangkok based, but they, they are truly progressive in the sense that they want to restructure Thai politics and Thai society. Pua Thai is fascinating. They are a leftist pro-farmer party. Yeah. Uh, essentially, they favor populism and they favor essentially handing money to Thai farmers, um, uh, which makes them controversial. You know, they're just buying votes, even with their just policies, et cetera. But they're, they're not a, an across-the-board progressive party. They're anti-cannabis legalization. They actually never, uh, they, they basically, you know, they, they've bent over backwards basically saying that they're not anti-royalist. They don't want to reform the lace majest laws. So Pua Thai is leftist uh, uh, economically in some ways, but they're not socially liberal. Sure, right, uh, right. They, Like they've kind of, or politically progressive. Whereas Move Forward is Bangkok-based, and they're basically like, we got to change Thai society. We have to reform the lace majest laws. We have to get the Thai... We have to get the Thai military out of politics. Um, and Pua Thai does not talk that way, but Move Forward does, and they won. Yeah. And like, the, like Move Forward's main campaign slogan was, if you vote for us, Thailand will not be the same anymore. That's and, and they bold, won. And man. They, and they won. Yeah. They won with that with that slogan. Some of the things that the 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 that Kunpita, the the leader of the party, and a few other people have been saying are, I gotta say, man, pretty ballsy for saying them in public about Thailand and about how it operates and, and the power structures. Oh, for in sure. The no, 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 no. They they are they are a progressive party, um, and to me, it's kind of sad that the way these things work out is that, um, you know, if you're educated, if you're from Bangkok. Then you're allowed to be progressive, you know. Then, then people look at you as like, oh, you're an intellectual or you're well educated. But the, the, here's the simple truth: put high. Um, they represent dark-skinned farmers, a lot of them who are uneducated. And if they talk like that, they are called communists or radicals mm. and enemies of the state. Right, right. And so this this is why you know this is why put high is just very. Uh, obesant like when it comes to you know the old establishment like they like they they have to bend over backwards saying no we're not radicals like we're just pro farmer they're sort of trapped you know, they, aren't they they're, they're like they can't yes. be too progressive they, they'll destroy that's what right people like it, you know? no that's right no because that that gives the military the their ammunition to mm-hmm. to to crush them yeah you know they just call them communists and radicals um but if you're educated middle or above from bangkok then you can make these bolder proclamations, and you won't be called a communist. You know, you'll, you'll be called you'll be called uh, like future oriented. You know, you'll be right, called right. like you know you're you know the worst criticism <laughs> is like oh you're you've been westernized. You know, so that's you know <laughs> How dare so the, the you know so the conservatives will just say like oh you're you know this is not America, this is Thailand. Like that's their. 
that's their rebuke to, you know, future forward. Yeah. Um, you know, with with uh, Kuhn Pita, the leader of the Future Forward Party, has a degree from both Harvard and MIT. So, mm-hmm. you know, they can say like, oh, you've been westernized, but they, they can't they can't credibly say he's a communist. And also correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems that a lot of the people who voted for uh, Move Forward were young people, the youth of Thailand. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Right. So there's definitely uh, but, you know, but that's the way politics usually works. Young people tend to be more liberal and progressive. But but the key is this: all of that was baked into the pre-election predictions, but move forward overperformed even that. Mm-hmm. Like the whole point is that apparently a lot of middle-aged and oh my god, even older people Da-da. voted for move forward. Clutching That's the pearls. key. So so the point this is this is the whole point of they overperformed. Everyone knew they were going to win young people, mm-hmm. but uh, you know young people are not super reliable voters. It's always like middle-aged and above these are the people who actually show up and vote whereas like young people like sleep in on election day but uh <laughs> like not only did young people not sleep in but move forward just captured more people throughout the whole demographic than expected so i do think that is new and shocking in some ways however this is the but the real but um uh the bottom line is this since you can argue 1938 Thailand has been stuck in a vicious cycle that does involve these democratic springs. It's like the flowers bloom. And this has happened many times since 1938. The flowers bloom and everyone is like, finally, like things are changing in Thailand. But then it's back to the same old thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And so this is why I, uh, I, you know, and I, 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 I'm not, I'm on a break right now. But just posting on my Ajahned Facebook, I've been I've been telling my students like, don't celebrate yet. Like the, the bottom line is, th- this is a very promising election result, but we're not close to being able to claim that the vicious cycle has been broken. The bottom line is, um, the 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 elite, whatever you want to call them, the conservative establishment. This is their game. You know they. Pro- they always promise democracy no matter what. They always allow a democratic spring for a while. And then there's always some crisis where they can claim things are unstable. And then they step back in and we're back to the same old cycle. Remember so when the, the uh, fa- Sam, Sam Ak, the former prime minister a bunch of years ago, had a cooking show? That's right. Yeah. You can't have another so job. You, you get a demo- yeah, you get a democratically elected government and then... Like the Thai courts say, oh, he has outside income from a cooking show. So we're going to override the entire will of the electorate. And, you know, Mm because he broke this like tiny little rule. But this is the thing. We don't know the future. So I think um, I think probably um, Kun Pita of Move Forward is probably going to be the next prime minister. Um, But even that is not certain. Um, And uh, and this is this is kind of the. Yeah, well, that, that's the second thing. I mean, we're like we're, we're pretty far away from a point where we can comfortably celebrate and say things have actually changed. Mm-hmm. Um, the first thing is he's got to become prime minister, and and move forward has taken a very interesting approach. So they have built a coalition with Puatai and a few other parties, but that coalition only kind of guarantees them about three hundred and nine votes. Whereas you need 376 votes to choose the next prime minister. And they've chosen not to formally build a 376 vote coalition, which is to me a somewhat fascinating move. Interesting. Um, and I've been, I've been researching this and talking to my Thai friends. And the bottom line is um, Kun Pita and Move Forward is they're playing a little bit of a risky game. They're basically saying, hey, we won the election. Um, We have a coalition of our hardcore true parties that we consider really democratic, but we're not going to make deals with you undemocratic bastards. We're not. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're not going to, because if those deals would involve them having to water down their policies. So they they can make a deal with Boom Jai Tai. They can sit down with Boom Jai Tai right now, make a deal to get over 376, but that deal will involve them giving Boom Chai Tai something on cannabis 
and but then giving up maybe reform of the lace majestic laws because right. Chai Thai is conservative except for cannabis. So mm-hmm. they could sit down right now. And it's funny, I'm pro politics, I'm pro deal making. Like, and the way this would happen in the States, and this is how it always happens, is uh, it's not, it's usually deals uh, in the US, it's usually deals within a party, factions within the Democrats or Republicans. You sit down and you compromise. Right. So there's something you, there's something you campaigned on. We stand for X, Y, and Z, and then it, you always end up selling Y and Z. Yeah, you sell Y and Z to get X. Politics is the art um, of compromise, isn't it? That's right. Um, but uh, move forward. They're they're acting with some, to put it bluntly, with some balls. Um, basically, they're saying, "Hey, we got three hundred nine, um, and we we dare you guys in the House and Senate to not support us." We're not going to sit down. We're not going to make a formal deal. We're not going to compromise on our policies. We won. We dare you to pick another prime minister because the Thai people won't accept it. And you're going to be super unpopular if you do that. So, That's- so it's up to you. And it, like, like they, they are playing a, a dangerous game um, because they're basically saying, hey, we're not going to expand our coalition. We just expect enough people from smaller parties and enough members of the militarily appointed Senate, we expect you guys to do the right thing and just vote for the party that won. Now, but we're not going to make a deal with you. We're not going to give you anything. You just have to do the right thing. Now that's the point that really fascinates me the most, because the way I think Thai politics has, has worked over the past couple of decades is that it's built up like tectonic plates. Like there's a lot of pressure under the surface that's just waiting for the right event sure. to explode. Sure. And the fact that Move Forward got such a, a, a good result, and they clearly have the result of so many Thai people who clearly want a change. Like it could not right. be more clear what direction Thai people want their sure. country to move in. I think it's really, really going to be interesting to watch how the conservative establishment reacts because – Agreed. How long can you ignore the clear will of the people? Like, how long can you just say, ah, well, maybe not yet. We're not ready for this yet. You know, like. I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. Really uh, interesting. Move forward, move forward is very confident that they kind of own the future. Mm. But I, I'm trying to take a long view. You know, politics is my field. And this vicious cycle of Thai politics has been going on a long time. Yeah. So the conservative establishment they're very good at finding a way to hold on to power. Every new generation of young people thinks we are going to be different. That's what the protesters <laughs> in the 70s thought. That's what the protesters in the 70s thought in Thailand. That's what the protesters in the 90s thought. That's what the, the people who shut down Bangkok thought. And none of that mattered. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that this time it's different. But man, that expression, hey, this time it's different, uh, that makes a lot of fools in, in Bangkok politics. So a lot of people who said, hey, it's going to be different this time have been proven wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. Like, I, I, I predict, my, my prediction now is that Move Forward is correct. And I think they're going to get to 376. I think Pete is going to be the next prime minister. Um, and I think the real test is going to be is when they actually institute the change that they stand for. Because, uh, you know, the, the conservative establishment, they don't really care about who the prime minister is as long as they get what they want. The bottom line is the prime minister, we've had many elected prime ministers in the past who basically were puppets of the real people in power. Mm. You know, so the bottom line is like they're, they're not they don't really care that a popular, young, educated guy like Peter becomes prime minister. They don't care about that. As long they're as like, I fine. get my as long as I get my. That, that's right. That's right. But if they actually try to institute the changes which they stand for, that will be the test. So it's whether the military and the Thai courts, which are also part of the conservative establishment, whether they allow move forward to actually make the changes. So that's going to be the real test. And that's probably not going to happen for at least two years. Right. Um, well, that's really the, so, part. the dangerous part is they're, they're saying they're going to, well, they want to end some uh, end conscription in the military. That's right. Yeah. They, they want, want to reduce, end military conscription. They want to reduce yeah, the no, role they, that the military plays in Thai society. Th- oh, no, that's right. No, they've got dangerous real games, change. Man. Like, 
No, they stand for real change. So we have the first test is whether he makes it to 376 and becomes prime minister. I'm going to say yes. But man, um, whether the conservative establishment is going to stand by and let them make real change, I'm skeptical. I'm just going to go there just based on Thai history. That's it. Like, I support real change. I think based on history anywhere, any any political movement anywhere in the country, in history in any country, the old people in power want to hold on to power. That's just how of course. it goes. Um, but in Thai history, it's just been a, a very clear cycle that's been repeating since the first coup, you know, in 1937, 1938. Right. Um, but anyway, I know this is going on for a while. But last thing I want to do is, you know, I like to do this with my students. Uh, I like to make predictions in class, not just talk or speculate but i like to put my chip on a on a color and make a bet of what's going to happen that's right earlier um, listeners so that, earlier we were talking and ed was saying how he he doesn't respect people who have all these theories but don't actually put their foot down and say this is what i think will happen but ed here ed's going to do it ed did it yeah i mean this is a problem i think in in academia where it's all <laughs> It's all analysis, which is worth a lot, but no one wants to make a prediction. So a couple weeks ago, I made a prediction of what was going to happen, and now we have an outcome, and I want to get kind of give myself a grade. All right. Um, and here's the bottom line is, I think I would give my predictions about a C plus. Um, I think I was right about some things. I was, I, I was astute enough to catch that move forward was moving up in the polls which I recognized um, uh, on, actually on the bonus show last week. I said, holy shit, there are these polls showing like move forward is moving up. And I think I even mentioned that in one poll they were beating Pu Okay. So I'm, I'm glad I did that um, uh, because it turns out that those polls were more accurate than the other polls. But I did think that Pu was going to win, but that's what most of the evidence was showing. So, you know, I, you know, being a good social scientist doesn't mean you have to have magic powers. You know, like you, if the data right. says one thing, you're allowed to follow the data. So, I, so I don't, I don't give myself too too many marks off for thinking Poetai was going to win. But I think my biggest mistake was, I really thought that a, a coalition between Poetai and Move Forward was going to be very difficult to achieve. But the bottom line is this: um, Poetai, at least so far, has basically said, "Yep, we're going to join Move Forward." Mm-hmm. Like you can add our you can add our votes in so so that's how that's how the coalition now is up to like three hundred nine three hundred ten votes is that Poetai basically said nope okay we lost but we're gonna support uh, uh, the candidate from move forward now we'll wait to see if that really happens like it hasn't happened yet but right now Poetai has just said yep we are a democratic party we support what the people want the people voted for move forward. So we'll support them. And I thought that was going to be a, a much tougher hill to climb. And I, I was a little bit, I expected maybe Toxin and Puatai to be a little bit more Machiavellian. Ooh. Because the bottom line is, the bottom line is Puatai right now, they could just go to the conservative establishment and say, hey, we'll vote with you guys. And then boom, uh, the, then game over. Peter cannot be prime. You know, Peter cannot be prime minister now. Now, Puatai would never uh, uh, support s- like the current prime minister continuing, but Puatai could just say, "Hey, we understand uh, um, like Patong Tarn freaks you out because she's a member of the Shinawatra clan, but we've got our number two guy, uh, Kun. I think his name is Shreta. So Puatai has this another candidate who's a successful businessman that the conservative establishment could be satisfied with. So. <laughs> Puatai could oh, go all like Toxin could go all Toxin could just go all Machiavelli and they, they could just make a deal and so the number two Puatai candidate could be easily become prime minister and and basically move forward has no way to stop that from happening and and, and so I thought there would be a, a big risk of that but Puatai has been nope we're going to support the people hmm. we're we're and, now, and we'll see what happens Very it's not done yet and I think I I didn't see that I miss I missed that. And so that's why I, I definitely didn't crush it. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go C plus. I would say that'll bump you up to a B minus just, just, be, just <laughs> okay. because you were very knowledgeable and very eloquently uh, explained what's happening. So I'll, I'll give you a B minus on that. I'll bump you up a little bit. Thank you. Don't be too harsh. On Thank yourself. you, Achan. 
Thank you, Rajan Greg. I appreciate that. I'm the teacher's assistant in the background. Yeah, I think you did a good job. <laughs> Interesting right. times, man. Good dis- good description, good summary of what happened. Um, and uh, yeah, like you said, we're not out of the woods yet. It's not time to start popping off fireworks. Too early. Way too early. Way too but early. But it's, 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 it's a very indication of, of the direction in which Thai society is moving uh, yep. at, at large. So yeah, really, really cool. Thanks, man. That was good. All right. We ask our listeners to send us a voicemail using the little microphone button on our website if they have something to say. And this week we heard from Scott, who had a really interesting question about the devil's lettuce. Take a listen. Hi there, Craig and Ed. Thanks so much for the podcast. Continually good stuff. Scott C. here, longtime listener, first time caller. Ed, you have spoken a few times about marijuana and you were mentioning Kitty and the import of foreign marijuana. Something I have not been able to figure out, and I've asked lots of people, and maybe you have some insight, Ed, why is weed so expensive here? I'll draw the example that in Canada, where it's been completely legal nationally for five or six years, you can buy weed from a store, tax paid to the Canadian government, where you know developed world wages are being paid, and that's going to work out for a high-quality bud you're going to pay about 175 to 200 baht max per gram, right? And that's at low quantity buy. Here in Thailand, for even kind of mid to upper mid grade, you're looking at about 500 plus. And I just can't figure out how I could get high quality bud for one third of the price in a developed country where wages are higher and taxes actually being paid to the government where it isn't here. Thanks for any insight you can share and keep up the great work, guys. So, Ed, I'm not sure if our listeners know, but on our bonus episodes, we often do a segment called Weed Watch, where we talk about the legalization of marijuana in Thailand. So this is a little bit of a Venn diagram between the two episodes, but this question is all about weed. So I'm going to turn it over to you, who know more about this area than I do. (laughs) Um, So I've got an answer for Kuhn Scott, a fan of the podcast, good friend of both you and I. Um, his question, you know, basically is, why is weed still so expensive here? Mm-hmm. And I've got an answer. I don't know if it's right or not, but I'll, I'll give my best answer. I think the answer uh, is twofold. W- one is the fact that the market here is just less mature. So it's true in Canada, you've got taxes being paid and, and higher labor costs. Uh, but the bottom line is it's a mature market. Um, and we're still in, um, I think Thailand is still in the euphoria of of cannabis being deregulated. And so it's just not a mature market. Mm. And now if you listen to uh, Kun Kitty recently, she will talk a lot about prices coming down. So the market is maturing here and prices for better cannabis are starting to come down. Um, Scott is correct that they are not uh, yet approaching the current prices in Canada, but they are coming down, which is what you would expect as the market matures. Mm. Uh, And my second answer is just profiteering. The bottom line is yeah. um, people people want to make money, so they're overcharging and getting away with what they can. Uh, and I think that um, the, the, the problem is that uh, you have these essentially illegal imports, which I think Thai, I think the Thai people who are importing that stuff are overpaying um, for what the market price would be in Canada. But the bottom line is these are illegal imports. They're overpaying for them because it's essentially black market stuff, right, yeah, even yeah. though it's even though it's apparently very widespread. And then, of course, they're passing on those costs to customers. Customers are still stuck in the, uh, the euphoria of being able to buy weed legally here, which five years ago, you and I would have said, like, would never happen in 50 years. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, right? You know, and yeah, we, yeah, we would have, like, laughed in your face, <laughs> like, five years ago if you said, like, you're going to be able to buy, buy weed on the street never like, happened, legally and stoner. openly. So I think it, yeah, so I think it's a combination of just... The, the the early stages of the market, even though, of course, we have to put early in quotes now that we're, we're approaching one year. Um, but everyone that I know, and I've noticed this, the prices are starting to come down. Uh, it's just taken maybe a little bit longer than people expected. So I, I'm with Scott here that it's, it's, you know, well, it's funny because Scott can say that these prices are painful because he's used to the Canadian market. But for me, I'm one of the euphoric customers. I'm like, I don't like paying what I'm paying. And I realize that the prices are cheaper in mature markets, but I'm still paying it 
you know, and I'm still I'm still liking it. But I would I I want the prices to come down, and sure. they should um, as the market matures. And again, uh, the other question mark is just no one knows what the law is going to be in three months or six months, yeah. and so who who knows? Like things might things might end up getting even more expensive depending on whatever the new regulations are. Interesting. Good answer. Puff, puff, pass. Thanks for phoning in, Scott. Yeah, Scott, that was great. Thank you. Good question. All right. A final thanks to our patrons who support the show. Patrons get a ton of cool perks and the warm, fuzzy feeling knowing that they're helping in our never-ending quest for cool content. Find out more by clicking support on our website. And connect with us online. We're Bangkok Podcasts on social media, bangkokpodcast.com on the web, or simply bangkokpodcast at gmail.com. We love hearing from our listeners and always reply to our messages oakley doakley you can also listen to each episode on youtube you can send us a voicemail through our website that we'll feature on the show just like we did with scott i dumped twitter but you can now find me on mastodon at bkkgreg at home.social thanks for listening everyone take it easy out there and we'll see you back here next week no doubt